Recently I presented you a project where I banned a Rickroll GIF to Silicon and people seem have to enjoy that. As mentioned in that video, that Rickroll was part of Tiny Tape Out 2, which is an open source shared Silicon, which means there are many more projects on that chip, hence why it's so affordable to take part in that. The Rickroll GIF was actually a meme project that I put in last minute. Before doing that, I submitted three other projects that have a real world use. The way Tiny Tape Out 2 worked was that the projects were addressed sequentially, so it was only possible to clock the inputs and outputs of the chip in the kilohertz range. Thankfully, this changed for the new Tiny Tape Out runs. I made a lightsaber five years ago that used a gyroscope and neopixels to display images in midair. That was cool. And I thought this also would be possible with the kilohertz clock of Tiny Tape Out 2. So the plan was to make a simple controller that would be able to display graphics or text on a rotating fan or something. Since we have an output of 8 bits, we can just display a column of 8 monochrome pixels. Anyways, good enough for text and some basic graphics. My first attempts were just to clock in the data in a write mode and then just clock them out in the output mode. The same thing would be also achievable with just some regular shift registers. The problem was that in the limited space of a tile on Tiny Tape Out 2, I was only able to fit in about 20 to 30 columns of pixels. That resolution is not high enough to write any text. And the graphics would be basic at best. So in the third attempt, I decided to combine a fixed character set and graphics. I was able to fit in 30 words of 7 bits. The highest significant bit would decide if the word represents a column of pixels or a whole character of 8x8 eight eight pixels from a character ROM that's on the ASIC itself. And you know from my Rickroll project that I was only able to fit in like 450 bytes of data as a ROM in there. So I also had to limit the character set. So I made a whitelist of characters that I want to put in the character ROM. It ended up being the capital letters, digits and some commonly used special characters. I made a simple JavaScript tool that took an image of the CGA character set, extracted the pixels of those characters and just generated a big Verilog case. So in the end, this project was able to display a mix of 30 characters or pixel columns, making it a 240 by 8 pixels resolution if you use only text, which was good enough and had an actual character. The benefit of using Verilog is that you can put it on an FPGA and actually test it. And I did so and it worked. So I submitted it to TinyTipo2 and waited my 8 months. At the last Hackaday Supercon, Matt handed me one of the first Tiny Tape Out 2 boards and I immediately had to just solder a mock-up to test my project. I just used one of my VGA boards on the back to control the input of the characters and the output clock. And I was really amazed to see it working. As Matt gave me a few of those ASICs, back at home I designed a board that would be more lightweight than this one and where I could actually run this project properly. I designed it with some mounting holes in the center, DASIC on the front, but also an ESP32 on the back. Yeah, actually we need some way of uh, uploading the characters and graphics that we want to be displayed. In addition to that, I added a Hall effect sensor to measure the RPMs and the MOSFET to drive a DC motor. Since the whole thing would rotate, I also added a connector for a battery. I ordered the boards at my longtime sponsor Eisler. I like Eisler for my prototyping projects because they are super quick, have good quality PCBs and stencils. The budget option with the free shipping is really competitive if you don't need your boards to be shipped within one business day. But even for a professional setting, Eisler is a good partner, providing you a good customer service, assembly options and the manufacturing is based in the EU, which might be a critical point for some projects. If you are interested, check out the link in the description and use the code BOARDLUNI to get a few bucks off your order. As usual, the boards arrived within a few days, so I could continue to assemble it before my brain was able to mentally move on to a new project. Oh yeah! Since this PCB has a lot of different components, I used Eisler's assembly guide to help me place the parts. 
If you uploaded your project file either by using their extension or by uploading on the website, it will have all the information needed to place the parts. I stenciled the front side with the ASIC first. The back side has just the ESP32 that can also be soldered by hand if needed. In my last video with this mega cluster, I soldered thousand components by hand and you shouted at me to use a vacuum pump instead of tweezers. And I totally agree, tweezers get always sticky and I actually have the pixel pump since recently. The pump came with 8 of these SND magazines and I must admit I love these things. Usually I try to juggle all my standard components in those big reels and it's a mess. And now I could just roll in a few hundred in each of those and dispense them easily to pick with the pump. With the foot pedal you can just turn on the vacuum and release it again. What I didn't know is that you can attach a second pedal and actually switch to the next part. Isla supports the second pedal in their assembly guide as does iBOM if you use that. But the best part about using a pump is that you can keep the LEDs just oriented and place them all within seconds without checking the orientation. I just realized it in this project and I don't want to use tweezers for that anymore. Check it out, I linked it in the description as well. And here comes the pure gold, one of the rarest ASICs. After reflowing, I just removed some solder bridges from the QFN, which is really simple, and added some solder to the USB receptacle. Since I used low temperature solder paste, I also wanted to use it for the ESP32. Trying to also connect the thermal pad on the bottom made it really hard to solder on the module. At the end, it worked with the hot air gun. I also added the Hall effect sensor and that was basically it. Ready to test. It didn't turn on. Okay, nothing happens. Nothing gets warm here. So it seems there is a minor inconvenience somewhere. It seems the ESP was a little bit shifted and uh, shorted a few pins. 3.3 volts. Which wasn't that good. We'll bump it into place. The issue is that, that we have too much solder on the, on the thermal pad below. Using the hot air didn't help much. I wasn't able to move it even a bit. So I put it on the small hot plate and turned it upside down so I won't lose the components on the front side. It's moving, it's moving, it's moving. Boop. ESP32 fondue. That worked, but the temperature was so high. <gasps> I even lost the can of the ESP32. We lost the can. I shouldn't put it to 200 degrees. Yeah, where we go, we don't need AMI shielding. Yeah, all right. I saw that it back on without the can. Wait, this is not what I expected. <laughs> Flick.e, no, it's working, that's good. That seemed to fix it and I was able to continue to add the battery. To be able to charge the battery, I just used one of those old school charging circuits and added the same type of JST connector to it. Yeah, that will do. Later I changed it for a smaller one, but oh well. Uploaded moment of truth. I spare you all the debugging that had to happen this time as well. But here's the first working test. <laughs> yeah! There you go, there you go, it works. Oh, oh, it died. It died, it died, it died. Ah, here we go. So this is graphics, and this is the text. 
Here we go, the patience paid off. <laughs> now you can see that. <laughs> I changed the shutter. You can actually see something displaying there. Next part would be to attach a motor and make it rotate so we have a controlled environment to display any text and graphics. I used Fusion to design something that would attach a DC motor that I found in one of my bins. Understand that I would be able to either put on the table or mount somewhere. Keeping all the small screws and bolts finally paid off this time. I found two that would be fitting and attached the motor. How I would attach the magnet to the stand wasn't planned out. It just has to be close to the passing hull effect sensor. So I just use a bolt, hot glued it in and put a small magnet on top. Who planned this device? Uh. <laughs> I will glue it to the captain tape here. Captain tape! That'd be good enough. Yeah! And here it is, this is the result. You can see some text and also the graphics. There is a heart and a smiley here. Turning the device on wouldn't start it immediately. You have just to flick it and once the whole effect sensor is triggered once, it tries to keep constant RPMs that would match the text. Since depending on graphics and text, the resolution may vary. A PID controller would be more suited to control that. I also tried to add Wi-Fi capabilities, but when I knocked off the can of the ESP32, it seems I also removed few passives from the antenna, so I actually had to replace the ESP again. The Wi-Fi works, but uh, oh well, you know how ESP projects work. They tend to crash and then you give up. At this point I am really satisfied that my controller on the ASIC works and that's all I wanted to show. I'm looking forward to testing the high clock speeds that are possible now with tiny tape out. My current project is trying to design my own CPU and put it on there, but that might be so big that we might need to submit a project to chip ignite directly at eFabless and get the whole ASIC for ourselves. Anyways, I hope you liked this project. Thank you to Icelab for sponsoring this. Check out the Pixel Pump and big thanks to all my supporters on Patreon, GitHub, PayPal, Channel Subs and Twitch. See you next time. Bye. I don't even know if the flash chip is flashed. I just, I, I found just a bunch of loose flash chips and I don't know which one was programmed and, and, and which not. So I don't even know if Caraval is running.